Registered Phenomena Code 409 Object Class Alpha Yellow Hazard Types Info Hazard Extra Dimensional Hazard Unconfirmed Containment Protocols RPC-409 is to be stored within a secured bookcase, equipped with a locking mechanism, accessible only by staff with Level 3 clearance or higher. Any testing is to be approved by the head researcher, and interviews are to be monitored by two ASF guards at all times, along with 409A1 and 409AB subjects being restrained as of interview number 20. Addendum C As of April 18, 2000, testing has been discontinued. Head Researcher Chow RPC-409 is a hard copy of the book The King in Yellow by author Robert E. Chambers. RPC-409 has been rewritten to contain a transcription of the supposedly fictional The King in Yellow play featured in the original stories. The interpretation somewhat connects to the short excerpts featured in the original stories, and has the same anomalous effects mentioned in the short stories have been mirrored. However, new effects have also been noticed during testing, alongside certain references from the stories being altered to accommodate certain anomalous effects. The original effects mentioned in the stories are somewhat present and include an extreme compulsion to read the entirety of Act 2. This is unchanged from the original source. This is preceded by drastic alterations in personality, occurring in 60% of all testing, designated as RPC-409-1A, or gradual mental deterioration, occurring within the remaining 40%, designated as RPC-409-1B. These appear to be altered from the original concept somewhat, as the book has never been explained doesn't appear to work this way in the stories. RPC-409-1A exhibit two randomized but permanent changes after reading 409, behavioral alterations and personality alterations. Personality alterations are less concerning, with many 1A instances altering their personality to be more subdued. Only 30% of cases see an increase in aggressiveness with greater than 6% of cases acting impulsively, meaning fatalities in most aggressive instances are uncommon. Behavioral alterations diagnosed include Schizophrenia three instances, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder six instances, Tourette's two instances, Bipolar II Disorder five instances, and six other unique alterations reported. The subject's altercation triggers randomly for a short period of time, and there appears to be no correlation between the reader's previous mental state and these diagnosed disorders. RPC-409-1B instances seem to encompass these mental disorders to the point of psychosis, with some 409-1A instances even converting into 409-1B instances in extreme circumstances. 409-1B instances can also trigger an RPC-409-2 manifestation by mentioning in any context the yellow sign. It is unclear at the time if 409-1B instances are compelled to say it by possibly 409-2, or if they say it by their own free will. Addendum A 409-1B instances now quote lines from the first act. Study is ongoing to understand exactly what caused this. RPC-409-2 is an unidentified humanoid entity that stalks 409-1B instances until they have vacated any surrounding public spaces before displacing them to an unconfirmed location. Attaching GPS devices to 1B instances have left inconclusive results, as the device stops working when the subject is displaced. According to 409-1B interviews during tests, 409-2 will regularly disguise as either a researcher or security personnel. 409-2 is only visible to 409-1B instances, and will phase through objects if any attempt at physical contact is made. All subjects refuse to explicitly state 
what was written in Act 2, under any circumstances. 4091A and 1B instances also seem to share a mass dream, where they visualize the city of Carcosa, as interpreted in 409. Subjects have witnessed entities in this dream, collectively designated 409-3. They are mostly hostile, with only two entities described. A female entity with wings, only sighted once in explorations. The other entity has never been described other than being mentioned as he. Researchers have theorized it to be either and there have been five sightings of him as of December 8, 2000. All other 409-3 entities have been seen only when chasing subjects and appear as crowds. Addendum B There has been an unusual instance of 4091A. These instances contain no long-term abnormalities other than the collective dream and appear in less than 2% of cases. The first recorded instance was with subject and there has been cases since. 409-2 is highly aggressive and persistent towards capturing these 4091A instances. Any 4091A instances should be immediately diagnosed and interviewed for any information pertaining to anything but the second act of 409. Researchers Diana and Werner See Test No. 10 Discovery RPC-409 was found in the dormitory of Juan Curtis and the University of England. An anonymous call notified Authority field agents, warning of, quote, a danger only fit for the Authority to contain, unquote. RPC-409 was found on the desk with Curtis missing from the premises. With the evidence recovered, field agents initially designated him a POI, but researchers later discovered he manifested 409-2, and POI status was revoked. Experiment Log Excerpts Test No. 2 Four subjects were made to read the entirety of Act 1, then were told to reenact it, each subject given a role from the play. CSD-5633 Camilla CSD-6221 Casilda CSD-3246 The Stranger CSD-1578 The Narrator Inner Monologue of the Stranger Head of Ministers CSD-0453 Ministers Citizens of Carcosa when appropriate Results the first act was performed with no anomalous effects present. A summary is present below of the first act. Researchers notes, well, at least that effect hasn't been altered, despite the circumstances of performing the story instead of reading it. Now, however, comes the real test. Researcher Diana. Summary of Act 1 The play starts with introducing the stranger, the protagonist and situates him as a spy arriving from Aldebaran, his home city, to see the king in yellow. His inner monologue makes clear he hasn't been in Carcosa since he was an infant, and he is eager to meet the king for the first time, especially since his espionage turned the tide of the war between Aldebaran and Carcosa to Carcosa's favor. He is only able to meet the queen and princess of Carcosa, Casilda and Camilla who invite him to the king's masquerade party for his efforts, which has taken place in a few days. The following scenes consist of the stranger exploring Carcosa, waiting for the masquerade party. Many scenes revolve around the stranger meeting citizens of Carcosa, and him noticing events that make the city and its people appear stranger and stranger. Examples include dialogue such as, You should be thankful. It's his light that shines upon us keeps us sane. He has my heart, my mind, and my body. Let him in and let him keep you safe. Ah, a foreigner. You know Carcosa is not a stranger to foreigners. We get them every now and again through our many gateways. How are you finding Carcosa? The stranger realizes something is wrong with Carcosa and decides to investigate. He talks with the queen and princess about the king and learns they only see him at masquerade parties, 
along with the rest of Carcosa, and with him mentioning the Lake of Halley outside of Carcosa. The two get upset and order him not to go there under any circumstances. When the stranger leaves, Casilda orders the head of the ministers to use his contacts to shadow him, to ensure he doesn't investigate any further. Despite the warning, he evades his stalkers and goes to the Lake of Halley. There is no scene explaining what happens there. Instead, it immediately goes to the final scene. The final scene starts with the stranger appearing at the masquerade and announcing his intention to Camilla and Casilda of unmasking the king and accusing him of a massive conspiracy during the party. Casilda agrees to help, soliloquizing on the tribulations of her king's actions and deeming this a punishment for his neglect. Camilla, however, is hesitant and runs out. It ends with the stranger and Casilda running through the plan as Camilla runs through the streets of Carcosa, calling out to the king, pleading for her life. Test number 3. The same subjects were given the same roles and were told to read and perform Act 2. Results, complete non-compliance from all subjects, with four being converted into 409-1A instances and the other a 409-1B instance. Despite the threat of termination, all subjects refused to perform. When physically forced, all 409-1A instances converted into 409-1B instances and attempted to mutilate their limbs and rip out others' throats with their teeth or swallow their own tongues. While security attempted to stop the subjects, the isolated 409-1B instance was taken by 409-2. All remaining 1B instances were self-terminated or otherwise mute. Test number 7. Subject with a 409-1B instance acted mostly comatose, but under stress was prone to hysteria. Subject mentioned the yellow sign, and 409-2 manifestation was imminent. All personnel were told to avoid the area, and security were told to stay with the subject and shoot wherever the subject deems 409-2 is. Results, subject went into hysteria five minutes after mentioning the yellow sign, and test procedures were implemented. Subject became highly agitated and pointed at the door, leading security open fire at the door. Fire at the door lasted five seconds, which security then asked if 409-2 was terminated. Subject then responded that he was attempting to open the door, but security reported that they could hear nothing from the door. Onlooking researchers ordered the door to open. When security opened the door, the power cut out for five seconds. When they came back on, the security guards had converted into 409-1B instances, and the subject was gone. Researchers recall only hearing minuscule sounds during the power outage. Diana, this is only a warning since your transferal here was recent. CSDs aren't as disposable here as they are in other sites, and your current experiments have cost us more than every experiment combined this month. Make some headway. Prove that these sacrifices are worth something, and I'll negotiate with the site director to employ more CSDs to your efforts. Otherwise, we'll have to postpone testing until the new arrival of CSDs next month. Time's ticking. We need results. Head Researcher Chow Test Number 10 Subject was the second recorded abnormal 409-1A instance. Due to the aggressiveness of 409-2, Subject was immediately interviewed on diagnosis as an abnormal 409-1A instance. The first question asked by the junior researcher interviewing was about the contents of Act 2. Results. As soon as the subject started talking, all personnel in earshot became entranced. With the subject finishing his summary of Act 2, all listening personnel became either 1A or 1B instances while 409-2 seemingly manifested and took the subject. All transcripts of this interview were incinerated, due to the possibility of an auditory hazard. Exploration Log Excerpts Forward. Subjects were tasked in their dream state to explore and recount their findings. Breakthrough explorations are shown below. For a full list, see document Exploration Number 02 Subject with a 409-1A instance 
with an aggravated personality shift and diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder, ordered to check the nearest town and dream. Results. Subject described the architecture of houses as dome-like and perceived many large towers in the city. All houses subsequently entered were all empty despite signs of life. Dream concluded after 20 minutes perceived by the subject. Exploration number 03. Subject with a 409-1A instance with a calm personality shift and diagnosed with narcolepsy. Told to observe the landscape and notice any landmarks in an attempt to locate where Carcosa is situated. Results. Subject failed to describe the land around Carcosa, but managed to describe features in the sky. He recounted the sky as bright, despite it seemingly being night, with three moons and black stars in the sky. Subject also identified the constellations and Subject woke after approximately five minutes from entering the dream. Astrological tracking pinpointed at the would be where Carcosa is situated, but with observation of the planet, the city could not be seen. The head researcher proposed his theory, leading to a doubled effort in exploration of the interviews. Exploration number 05 Subject with a 4091A instance with a nervous personality shift and was prone to bouts of kleptomania. Subjects was told to try and interact with any people or creatures of any do appear, and to take note of any differences in the landscape. Results. Subject described a day setting, with two suns. With this being the first dream state to be set in the day, subject was able to describe a lake, presumably the aforementioned Lake of Hali, as depicted in 409. The landscape surrounding Carcosa was depicted by the subject as a barren desert, with a mountain range behind the city. Despite nervousness, subject tried to interact with a female entity with wings seen near the lake. She immediately flew into the city and hid. Subject tried to follow, but was scared away by an entity only described as large and titled He by the subject. Despite persuasion, subject refused to describe the entity in any other way than the moniker He. Subject woke up when he attempted to steal a small coin purse from the nearby house. Subject claimed as soon as he put it in his pocket, he woke up. Exploration number 6 Subject with a 4091A instance, with a reclusive personality shift, diagnosed with a form of PTSD, ordered to check important looking buildings. Results. After several minutes of agitation upon awakening, the subject recited their experience. The subject appeared in the market square and began searching for important buildings. After a few minutes, he discovered a cathedral and proceeded towards it. The subject noticed the cathedral was built similar to the other buildings, with a dome-like structure and large towers, along with banners adorning a symbol now recognized as the yellow sign. See subject sketch here. Upon entering, he heard a conversation between two unseen people. The only clear words and phrases he could hear were, Our sign, summon, the blasphemous sinners, his puppets, the few of us that remain, and rebirth. It was then the two conversing must have realized the subject was present, and they moved quickly towards the subject. Not knowing where they were, the subject ran out and immediately heard more people pursuing him and chased him through the city chanting, Reborn Carcosa. The subject attempted to reach the outskirts of the city, and was able to reach a path leading to the mountain range, and he hid in the mountains until he woke up five minutes later. Interviews available to Level 3 only. Forward. The main purpose of these interviews were to see if the subjects could relate any further information on the book, its mechanisms, its author, or the location of 409-2 victims. Three choice interviews are listed below. To see the full list, read document Interview number 05 Subject CSD-1503 Subject with a 409-1A instance, and was quick to insult and antagonize overall. Excerpt from the end of the interview 
Look, give me something, or I swear to God I'll terminate you myself. Oh, five minutes with me, and you're already threatened to kill me. Very classy, you bitch. You think I fucking care at this point? <laughs> I fear nothing, motherfucker. If I could stop him, I can take you. Stop him? Who? 409-2? He only takes bodies, you idiot. Who the fuck you think I'm talking about? I'm thinking you're gonna tell me. Fat chance. Suck my dick. Researcher Diana describes in detail the termination method she'll enact. Cut due to extensive length. You're, you're fucking psycho! You better start talking before this becomes a damn reality. I hope he takes you and punishes you like the others, you… Subject starts screaming and flailing on the floor. CSD-1503 refuses to stop until sedated. Researcher Diana was reprimanded for an orthodox interviewing methods, and it was later found that CSD-1503 converted into a 4091B instance and chewed his own tongue off. Interview number 20 Subject CSD-4058 Subject with a 4091B instance and would continuously shriek unless sedated. For interviewing, the subject was partially sedated. The full interview is below. Hello, CSD-4058. I was hoping you'd answer some questions about the bad man. He's… coming after me. And why is that? My mask's gone. I read the book and… poof. He stole my mask. Why is the bad man coming for you, if he's already stolen your mask? He's… that's… not him. He doesn't like… when… CSD-4058 suddenly jolts her head up. No mask? No mask? Well, do I have a mask? GIVE IT TO ME! CSD-4058 lunged Researcher Diana, almost pinning her to the ground. ASF personnel move Researcher Diana out of the interview room and terminate CSD-4058. Interview concluded. 4091B instances after this incident now quote lines from the first act of RPC-409. No specific pattern or correlation has been established between the quotes used. The mention of masks also seem to elevate, and subsequent interviews seem to tie to masks symbolizing either a mental state or psyche. Cross-analyzation of Act 1 and its new theory is ongoing to decipher it further. Interview number 30 Subject CSD-0356 Subject with a 4091B instance was extremely paranoid and would murmur to himself, believing anyone talking to him was a voice in his mind. The interview was common until five minutes in. I can't let him. Not now. Not upon us, O King. What does the bad man look like again? Guards and scientists. He serves only for masks. Casilda, where is your mask? This is getting nowhere. What was in the book again? The Lake of Holly. We must reveal the truth. The sinners and maskless are sent. Where are they taken? The Casilda? The Carcosa? No. No. Casilda sinned and fell. Camilla pleaded for life. The sinners and maskless are to be saved by angels. <laughs> CSD-0356 holds his head in his hands and starts yelling. What's happening? It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Even now my mantle is spreading through the gateway by the strength of Holly's captives. Shoot him! The unspeakable cannot be stopped. Even the Phantom hides and spreads lies of Carcosa to deceive you as he did her. ASF repeatedly shoot at CSD-0356. Subject continues talking through termination. Ah, the end of the coil beckons the vessel as his thoughts turn to dust, shamefully sustain the existence of this reality. CSD-0356 expires. We record that? Get the head researcher in here. His fucking theory is correct. Closing statement. Testing is now forbidden and no one is allowed to read RPC-409 under the threat of termination.
Head Researcher Chow Document 409-1 Forward. This is a transcript of a recording, found at the dormitory of Curtis. Field agents are still looking for the intended recipient of this recording. Okay. Yesterday, I mailed my piece to the Academy, hoping I would get in. Guess what? They mailed it back today! They said they ran tests and they think my piece is too dangerous. How the fuck did they even mail a letter back so quickly? Well, you note how Miss Academy, whatever, since the higher-ups of the Academy think my piece is too dangerous, I'm using it on myself. Sounds stupid, I know, but they claimed the delirium was permanent, when I know it specifically made it temporary, and… oh. Now I'm in the state of delirium. Uh, yeah, I hear whispers. Paranoia is definitely setting in. Soon, I'll fall asleep. And I'll see if I've got the dream manipulation right. The Academy should have waited until the testers fell asleep. Yeah, then they would have said they visited Carcosa, and they would have flipped their shit. I've got to say, I have no idea where the story came from. I was just writing, and it just flowed out, like I was recounting history. Okay, I'm getting sleepy fast and I'm rambling. I'll leave this on so I can immediately record my findings, and hopefully I'll wake up before the Academy call the authorities. I'll email this to them, and then you. You did help after all. Twenty minutes pass before a sound is heard. Wow, holy shit, okay. Well, the dream manipulation is working better than I thought. I was able to conjure up a complete background for Carcosa, and even the Lake of Holly. I even got to talk to one of the characters, Camilla. She went on about the King's wrath, and the Phantom of Truth, and his betrayal of the King. Amazing stuff. And then she talked about the yellow sign, saying how it… Door is heard opening. Professor? How'd you… Wait. What's wrong? He requires an audience with you. You have information on the one known as the Phantom. What? I just… Wait. Oh shit, you're… If you resist, you'll regret his decision to keep you free. Come quietly, and you'll be rewarded. You stay the fuck away from me. Such a shame. I tried to be reasonable. Your fate will be decided by him. A brief struggle is heard, then silence. Tape continues in silence until three MST agents storm the room three hours later. Room clear! Why the fuck did we take this anonymous call so seriously? There is a recording device here. It's still on. Turn it off and get the investigators here. Also tell the others outside it's a false alarm. Jesus. How are we going to play off 50 armed men turning up at a university dormitory? I think we should be going with a bomb threat again. Let HQ know what's up, and about our cover story. Great. The MI-13 chaps will have a laugh about this. Recording stopped. Document 409-2 Forward. Letter found on the desktop of Curtis Addressed to him by a Christie from L'Academia de la Vera Art. Mr. It has come to our attention that you recently applied to the Academy of True Art, with your piece being, as you described, a monumental blurring of reality and fiction. We here at the Academy have reviewed your work and found it to be nothing as you have described in your passionate letter, with many of our testers being subjected to permanent change of character or insanity, and some even disappearing. We first thought your piece was seriously defective, but with many of our subjects mentioning your piece as the instigation for these changes, we believe it now to be intentional. You have two hours to reply to these accusations by the email address supplied below, or else we will have no choice but to surrender your location to the proper authorities. With regards, Christie, Curator of Literature